Good afternoon and welcome to another Coffee Break Catch-Up. My name is Mark. I am your host. I am the founder and CEO of All Things Coffee Break Languages and I'm delighted to be here this afternoon with you. Uh, it's this afternoon, at least in, in Scotland, but wherever you're watching, you're very, very welcome indeed. Now, let us know who you are, where you're watching from, and indeed which language you're learning. We're always interested to see who's watching. And of course, if you're watching after the event, then again, please feel free to post your comments here on Facebook or indeed on our uh, website or on YouTube, wherever it suits you best. The Coffee Break Catch-Up is very much uh, an idea. It's a, 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 an experiment. It's something that we are trying to put together to bring you new content and to keep you up to date with what's happening both with Coffee Break and indeed with the events around the world in the countries where the language that you're learning is spoken. So we hope that you enjoy it. We hope that you're uh, enjoying tuning in when you can. And of course, if you can't tune in live, then it's always possible to join us after the event, both in the video version and indeed in our Coffee Break catch-up newsletter which goes out uh, on a Friday. So as I say let us know who you are, who you're watching, which language you're learning and uh, uh, we will get on with the show now. Coming up, let's see if we've got this. Uh, yes indeed, coming up as usual we have got our Coffee Break news. We'll be sharing uh, what's happening here at Coffee Break and we've got our talking point this week which has got something to do with tennis and then, of course, our cultural roundup, where we'll be sharing what's happening within the world of language learning, uh, within the world of culture, in the different countries where uh, the language, as I say, that you're learning is spoken. So let's get straight on with the show. Um, we will say some hellos a little later on, but let's get on with the show for now. And that means we're going to go straight into our coffee break news. Okay, straight into our Coffee Break news then, we are starting with a, a welcome, and that's a welcome to our brand new social media assistants who started this week. That's Sophia, Robert and Silvia. And so far we have our, our three assistants, so that's Sophia for Spanish and Sophia is from Panama. We have Robert for German and Robert's from Germany and Silvia for Italian and Silvia is from Italy. We'll also be joined later in the year after the summer by Sophie from Belgium who will be helping us with French. So we're delighted that uh, Sophie, uh, sorry, Sophia, Silvia and Robert are joining us and we had a great day yesterday getting them all started and we're really looking forward to working with them. So welcome to the team, Sophia, Robert and Silvia. Next up is our latest episode of the Coffee Break Italian podcast, and that's the magazine, and this is all about La Comunità Valser, a very interesting area in Italy, to the, the north of Italy, and this is an area where people are people who, who speak Italian but also have a, a regional language, um, and they use this regional language. So it's, it's a, a podcast, an episode, all about this area and about the people who live there. And of course, there are other uh, elements too in the podcast. There's our question and answer, and our uh, perla di saggezza, the, the ciliegina sulla torta from Francesca at the end. So episode uh, three of the Coffee Break Italian magazine went out uh, at the beginning of this week, and we'll be following on with more episodes up until the summer. Moving on, we are also just about to publish a fantastic episode of En Marcha, En Marcha con Coffee Break Spanish. This goes out tomorrow. And uh, this episode was really good fun to make because it all involved a tapas tour. We were going around uh, Malaga with uh, the, the two people you see there in the, in the photo who run, uh, well, who are part of Devera Tours. And uh, they helped us get the, the real flavor of Malaga and uh, we tried lots of different tapas and of course recorded the, the events to share with you. So if you're interested in uh, all things Spanish and uh, finding out a little more about the tapas culture in Spain, then you can join us for uh, Coffee Break Spanish in Marcha con Coffee Break Spanish tomorrow and that is coming up then. Moving on, we have also just released our One Minute Swedish course on YouTube and this is to celebrate the fact that today is National Day in Sweden. So if you are watching from Sweden, gratis, um, we are delighted to, to, to wish you a happy National Day and uh, as I said, we are really excited to be launching One Minute Swedish on uh, the, the YouTube channel. So you can learn Swedish in minutes with One Minute Swedish on the YouTube channel. Also, 
We have just released another episode of Coffee Break German to go. And with this episode, we're asking the question, Wann hast du Geburtstag? Wann hast du Geburtstag? Literally, when have you birthday? So asking people when their birthday is, and it's a great opportunity to be practicing dates. So dates and times of year and so on. So that's a, a good episode there of Coffee Break German to go, which is again available on the YouTube channel. So that is a roundup of all things Coffee Break. Well, not, not quite a roundup of all things Coffee Break, because there is one other thing that we need to tell you about, and that is what we were doing last week. This time last week, we were in Milan, Italy. We're back to, to Scotland uh, this week. But last week, we were in Milan, Italy, and we were recording new content for our new project, Coffee Break Italian To Go. We had a great time recording this content and we would like to share with you a quick preview of something that we filmed there. So this is coming later in the year, uh, later in the year for Coffee Break Italian To Go, but we're going to give you a, a quick preview now. If you're an Italian learner, great. If you're not, well, you can watch the subtitles here that will help you. This is just a quick one minute preview of Coffee Break Italian To Go coming later in the year. Ciao a tutti e benvenuti a un nuovo episodio di Coffee Break Italian To Go. La domanda di oggi è che lavoro fai o formale? Che lavoro fa? Ripeto, che lavoro fai o formale? Che lavoro fa? Va bene, ascoltiamo le risposte della gente. Eh, sono studente in giurisprudenza. Io sono un avvocato. Io lavoro per una ditta di prodotti alimentari. Sono un sacerdote. Uh, faccio la lighting designer. Sono un consulente finanziario per una grossa banca italiana, Fineco Bank, che opera anche a Londra. E io invece sono una casalinga. Io sono giornalista e Pietro invece fa, fa l'asilo. E ora tocca a te. Voglio farti una domanda. Che lavoro fai? Perfetto. Allora è tutto per oggi, ci vediamo nella prossima puntata di Coffee Break Italian To Go. Ciao! Now obviously the, the final episodes of Coffee Break Italian To Go will be a little longer than that. And at first when you watch the episodes you won't see the subtitles and then you'll see subtitles in Italian the second time we listen to the answers. But the, the idea of To Go is that it's bringing you the chance to listen to real native speakers and practice what you've learned in our main lessons. So we've got Coffee Break Italian To Go now, that's coming later in the year. Coffee Break German To Go and Coffee Break Spanish To Go are already uh, out on, on YouTube and we're continuing to publish episodes of them both on YouTube and indeed on our website. I will also be adding later in the year some coffee break French to go I'm pleased to report okay it's time now to move on from our news and focus on this week's talking point One of the, the most important things about lang language learning is that trying to find ways in which you can practice your language while doing other things and other things that you enjoy and one of our colleagues, Flora, is very much into tennis and she was looking at the, the origins of some of the words involved in tennis and came up with some interesting ideas, some interesting uh, findings. In fact, lots of words associated with tennis come from French and we're going to have a look at them today in our talking points. So let me see if I can bring up uh, these slides. Uh, this is Je sais match parlez-vous tennis. We're going to start with the word tennis itself. It's called the sport of kings, but the word actually came from the French tenez. Now, tennis used to be called jeu de paume, the game of the palm in French. And the idea was that in this game, before hitting a shot across to their, po their opponents, it's thought that players would shout tenez meaning uh, to hold, tenir is to, to hold, but also when you give something to someone, you can say tenez or tiens, tiens, the informal form, or tenez, the formal form. So when you're handing something over or hitting a ball over a net, then you could be saying tenez, and over time, tenez became 
tennis. And that's how the word tennis came into being. So that's our first word, tennis. Let's move on and look at our next word, and that is the word let. Now, a let in tennis is when you take a, a, a shot and it hits it when you're taking a serve. You, it hits the net and it bounces over, and that would be called a let. But this word actually seems to come from the French word for net itself, which is le filet. Le filet. And the, the le became let, and then we lost the fi, and it was ending up as let. So another tennis term that ended up from French into English. And of course, we use the word let in English and also in some other languages too. Our third word in this, and I really like this one, is love. Now, when the score is zero in tennis, we talk about love. And uh, the interesting story behind this one, apparently, when, when we're talking about etymology and origins of words, it's not an exact science, but it is said that this word comes from the French word le. Now, you'll know that l'œuf means egg if you're studying French. In fact, one egg is always an œuf. One egg is only... Yeah. Okay, no, it's a bad joke. I know, I'll move on. So l'œuf means egg. And the reason l'œuf was used is because the zero reminded the players of an egg. And that's where we get love in English. So if the score is 30 love, then the, le, the love is actually l'œuf, the, the egg. So there you go. And moving on, our, I think our final word yep, is deuce. Now, deuce is the score when the score gets to 40-40. Uh, so 40 all gets to deuce. And the theory is, again, not an exact science, but the theory is that the origin of this word, deuce, was from the French à deux de jeu which sort of means two points left to play. And there are two points left to play at that point in the game, assuming you don't return to juice after you get your advantage. Now, there's other possibilities there about, about juice, but that is the, that's certainly the story I like, and it's one of the suggestions as to the origins of the word juice. So there are some ideas all about tennis, and we've actually written a blog article, Flora's written a blog article about this, and you can find that later this afternoon on the website. And in the blog article, there's more information about these terms, and also a handy cheat sheet uh, of tennis terms, so you can enjoy uh, tennis at the moment, the Roland Garros uh, tennis uh, uh, tournament, I couldn't remember the word there, tournoi, um, is underway in Paris and of course the, there's a summer of tennis ahead uh, with Wimbledon and, and so on. So if you are interested in tennis then please do check out our blog article and you can download the handy cheat sheet of tennis terms and you can do some translating of the scores on the matches that you're watching into the language that you're learning. So that is tennis. If you like tennis, let us know. Si vous aimez le tennis, dites-le. Let us know in the comments, uh, and we'll be we'll be delighted to hear that. Okay, it's time to move on to our cultural roundup for the week. Slides here, and we can move into our cultural roundup for the 6th to the 12th of June. And we're starting in France, uh, not with the Roland Garros tennis tournament, but with the Cathédrale de Lumière. And uh, every summer, basically between June and September, a free cathedral light show takes place in the, the city of Rouen. And there are dazzling illuminations projected onto the building's facade, onto the, the cathedral's facade. Rouen is the capital of the northern French region of Normandy, and there are spectacular vis visuals in, in this uh, festival depicting the Norman Viking adventures. The show is free, so you can enjoy this along with hundreds of thousands of spectators throughout the season, running from the 1st of June onwards right through to September. That is our French tip for the week. If you happen to be able to get to Rouen, then the, the Cathédrale de Lumière has already begun. Let's move on to a Spanish tip, a tip for Spanish learners anyway. And this is not coming from Spain, but from Puerto Rico. And this is the festival, or the Festival de la Piña Paradisiaca in Lajas. Now, Lajas is a southern town in, in Puerto Rico. 
And uh, this festival features vendors who sell locally grown pineapples and dozens of those local agricultural products and fried foods. There's live music, kiosks, uh, handmade crafts by local artisans, an agricultural market, and there are organised visits to the pineapple farms. And there's also a 5k race with an impressive view of the marina and mangrove groves that make La Parguera a popular getaway for both locals and tourists. So if you fancy heading to Puerto Rico, then you can try it. The Festival de la Piña Paradisiaca this week, starting the 7th of June. That is tomorrow. Okay, moving on to our next cultural tip for German learners. If you happen to be able to get to Berlin, then you can enjoy the Carnival of Cultures in Berlin. Now, Berlin itself is a hugely multi multicultural city, and therefore it's perhaps the, per the perfect place to celebrate different cultures. So this Carnival of, of Cultures in Berlin takes place between the 7th and 10th of June, and it's been running since 1996. Um, the, the main venue for this is the Blücherplatz Square in, in Berlin, and it's definitely the most multicultural, colourful festival in the city, where hundreds of thousands of people congregate at the most popular street festival to celebrate multicultural diversity with culinary delights and different uh, and, and cultural performances. There's music and art and national cuisine and handicrafts of different nations. Now, the high point of the festivities is a parade where 4,000 participants parade through the town, parade through the city, celebrating in multicoloured costumes, celebrating the different, the different nations taking part in this multicultural carnival of cultures in Berlin. So that's our German tip for this week. Now, all of these uh, areas, these uh, ideas that we're sharing with you, we will be including in our Coffee Break uh, catch-up newsletter, which goes out tomorrow. And there will be links, both in English and in the language, about these different festivals and these different events to help you do a little bit of reading practice and find out more about the countries and the cultures of the, the places that you're, you're learning. Okay, let us move to our final uh, suggestion for you, and that is La Maggiolata, the Cherry Festival, which happens in Rayano. Rayano is a small village in the province of L'Aquila in the Abruzzo region, um, and it is known as the Maggiolata. It was first organised in 1946 on the same day of San Venancio's Day, the village priest, the, the, the protector of the village. Now, every year there are parades, exhibitions of traditional costumes, dances and choirs, all celebrating cherries, the fruit symbol of Rayano. The festival ends with the Wagons Parade, which includes a little wagon for children too. So that is happening from the 7th to the 9th of June in Rayano in Italy. So another suggestion for you there, for if you're, if you're learning Italian and you happen to be in the Abruzzo region, you can head to Rayano and enjoy the, the festival. Once again, all of these will be shared in our Coffee Break newsletter, which goes out on a Friday, and if you're not already subscribed to the newsletter, you can do so at radiolingua.com slash newsletter. Okay, that is about as much as we have for you this week. However, we have had some comments and some hellos, so let us have a look at uh, these now. Let me see if I can bring these onto the screen. We've got Carol who's saying, Non vedo l'ora di sentire coffee break to go più tardi quest'anno. Grazie, Carol. So Carol can't wait to enjoy uh, coffee break Italian to go. Uh, we've got uh, Sean, who I think had possibly some uh, autocorrect problems watching in Boulder, Colorado. We're delighted you're here and that you managed to get your autocorrect problems sorted out. We've got Olivia, who's in Miami, Florida, loving the podcast Spanish and Italian. Uh, and we've also got Donna, who's joining us from New York City, and her latest viaggio is at Coffee Break Italian. Fantastic. Faye has a comment here, and Faye's saying that she doesn't really like the new live catch-up thing. That's that's entirely okay, Faye. Thank you for your comment. We're really uh, interested to hear your thoughts. Again, I said earlier that this is very much a, a, a trial. It's an experiment, and it's something that we've tried to keep going over the past few weeks in order to 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 see what it's like, to, to see if it's worthwhile, to see if you enjoy the videos. Now, obviously, the video is just part of it. The Coffee Break catch-up is about the video, the live video, which happens... At, just now, as you can see, I'm live, I'm speaking to you just now. 
Um, but also, obviously, the, the video is posted on the website afterwards. And indeed, we provide the, cafe, the Coffee Break Catch-Up newsletter. So you're, you're suggesting that you, you would read a small catch-up email bullet point so that you can link to anything more relevant. And funny, you should see that. That's exactly what the Coffee Break Catch-Up email newsletter does. So you can make sure you're subscribed to that. Um, 3.30 in Scotland is when the kids finish school. Yep, I know that. So um, the, my, my kids do finish school at the, at the same time. Uh, they are a little bit older, so they don't need collected as such. But uh, we, we, it's very difficult to find the perfect time when we have got listeners across the world um, who want to, to, to join us live or indeed uh, take part in our Coffee Break Catch-Up. Once again, thank you for your ongoing support, for your ongoing interest in all things Coffee Break, and we hope that you enjoy the Coffee Break catch-up. Let us know what you think. Let us know if you think that this is worth continuing. We're, we're always open to new ideas. Um, we are looking also at different ideas as to how we can use live video for uh, actual teaching and looking more ways in, in teaching the language through uh, live video. So, again, let us know if that's something that would be of interest to you. For now, I am going to say thank you once again, and uh, I shall say that in Swedish today because it is National Day in Swedish, so tack så mycket. Och hej då. Thank you and goodbye. It's been a pleasure working with you today on the Coffee Break Catch-Up. Thanks to the team behind the scenes and for everyone for all your help in uh, preparing this. But for now, that's it. Thank you and goodbye. We'll see you again next week for the Coffee Break Catch-Up.